So if you've flown drones for longer than a year, chances are you've had an unfortunate accident with your drone at some point. Sometimes you get away with a little bit of a minor scrape, you might lose a propeller, you might just invert your drone, and then sometimes you break the plastic component, which is the most depressing thing of all, uh, besides maybe breaking the camera. I think breaking the camera is probably the saddest thing that could happen. Unfortunately, I flew mine into a set of stone stairs, and so uh, I'm gonna have to get this repaired. Now, I think typically the best thing to do is actually to just go with the provider who builds your drone and actually get it repaired by them, because then you're actually gonna get it done successfully. It can be pretty expensive and cost prohibitive for, for certain types of drones, and since I'm just flying the DJI Spark, I'm gonna attempt to repair it myself first, because if I can repair this, um, I won't actually have to replace the plastic component on it. Now, I wouldn't necessarily advise people to repair their own drones unless they know what they're doing, and I don't know what I'm doing technically, but I did work for a plastic repair company for about three years, so I do know some things about glue, and so in this video I'm just going to talk my way through the repair that I'm doing, and in the hopes that maybe if you have a smaller drone or a less expensive drone, uh, you might be able to salvage uh, your damaged part and maybe maybe just get some more flight time out of it. Especially since this is my first drone, I just want to make sure that I can at least make the attempt at it and if I fail at uh, repairing it today, then I can still go ahead and replace it since it's the plastic component and not any of the internal mechanics that are broken. I think if you break the motors, if you break the camera on it, that's a good time to actually send it into the company. Uh, and this is a DJI Spark, so I would just send it into DJI to get it repaired by them. So how I'm going to repair this today is basically by using glue, and you don't want to just use any sort of glue to fix your drone. There's a couple of qualities of the glue that you should look for, uh, just to make sure that when you're flying it outside, it's not going to fall apart on you and cause a more catastrophic crash to, to the device you're using. And again, I'm not doing this as an expert, this is just assumption-based work. So um, don't take my word as gospel truth, do your own research, find out your own methods. But what I'm going to be using is a, a glue that's more akin to liquid vinyl. It's going to be UV resistant and it's going to have a bit more of a structural component to it. So when this stuff hardens, it's going to, um, it's going to be a little bit more like a flexible plastic. Uh, this will have some give to the drone, but it's going to mimic the, the, um, the material that it's actually made out of. And like I say, UV resistant is key because if you're flying your drone in sunlight, uh, UV light really deteriorates glues, it really deteriorates plastics. So that's just something you should keep in mind. You need to make sure that it's UV resistant, you need to make sure that it's going to actually be structurally similar enough to the material you're gluing something to, to make sure that you actually have like a good fix once you've done it. It's not just going to be like a silicon glue which is going to fall apart on you, it's not going to be hot glue, it's not going to be um, you know, liquid weld, you're not just going to be melting the plastic back together. This should hopefully provide some structure to what we're doing so that um, any sort of force that's exerted on it isn't going to snap it. Yeah, just, just something to look for in the glue that you're using. Just make sure that it's UV resistant and make sure that it mimics the material that you're adhering it to. I'm also going to be using an accelerant today just to make sure that uh, the glue that I put on it hardens immediately. Uh, it doesn't need a chance to cure once you put this stuff on it, so this is just going to make quick work of what we're doing so that we can get back to flying sooner rather than later. For the detailed work, I'm going to be using some razor blades, um, so I just have my little razor blade dispenser here. This is just going to let us get in there with the nice fine work that we're going to be doing, so uh, we're going to be able to just bead our glue on there, feed it into the little cracks so that we don't have a big messy cleanup sanding process at the end that we need to that we need to kind of fix. And of course safety first, uh, usually with glues if you're putting an accelerant on it it's going to trigger an exothermic reaction and when that happens uh, you can burn yourself so protect your hands, protect your furniture, protect whatever you're working on and just make sure that uh, what we're doing is not going to damage you or damage the things that you're working on. So safety first. I only have one glove today so I'm half safety. Now, of course, the most important part is to have your consolation or your celebration beer at the end. So if things go well, celebration. If things go poorly, consolation. Here's our patient. So I'm going to be repairing this plastic component right here. First thing I'm going to do is just put on my safety glove so that when I uh, get the glue on my hands it's not going to stick to my skin or burn me. So that should be good. And then we're going to get our razor blade. So if you have your little safety case and we're going to be applying it with the razor. So what we're going to basically do is uh, take the glue and then we're going to put a bead on our razor and then we're just going to slowly apply it. So first thing we're going to want to do is just get this in nice position so that uh, we're not 
concerned about where it's going to sit at the end. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can get it lined up as close as possible to its original position, um, just to make sure that the uh, force vector when it's flying up isn't going to be in an obscure direction, so it's not going to have to correct too much for, for what it's doing. So what I might do is put a little bit of tape on the side just to hold it in place so that I can correctly place the glue. So as you can see, this space right in here, this is going to be the place that we want to um, put our glue. We're going to fill this space and we're going to try and get it as close as possible again to that original position. What I'm going to do here is just ensure that I don't have too much glue on my razor blade. Um, obviously having too much is much worse than having not enough. We can always put some more on, but you can't take glue off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply one small bead and then I'm going to use the curing uh, agent, the accelerator, to uh, instantly dry the glue and um, this will save us from having to kind of clamp it down. Since it's delicate we don't want to have a long drying process where it could leak into the motors. We want to accelerate it quickly. Just a nice little swift okay, and then we're going to make sure it just pushes into position there close to the original as possible. We're just going to work our way along the seam. Alright, so I'm just going to show you kind of the seam I've made here. It, it's transparent glue, so you're going to be able to see the crack still, which is kind of good and is kind of bad. Uh, so we've just made a U-shaped seam along the side here, filled the crack in uh, at the top here. And this is going to be a nice uh, structural sort of um, repair that we've done. And like I say, just on the bottom, uh, just with the light uh, component here, I'm just going to wait for that to focus. Like I say, we've just avoided gluing movable parts together. And this will enable us to take off the light component should we need to. And uh, hopefully everything is still functional at the end of this. Now the last little thing that I'm going to want to do is just attach my propeller again. Uh, just uh, we're going to need to be nice and careful and slow about this again. So we have our old propeller that was cracked and broken. So we're going to just want to replace that with something that's nice and new. So there you go. And here's the new one. We're going to click this in place. And again, just don't put much strain on the joint that you've just repaired. Uh, of course, ours is um, glued and hardened and cured and everything because we use the accelerator. Alright, so we have our drum basically repaired at this point and uh, basically what I need to do now is just do a test run with it. Unfortunately, it's really windy and snowy outside right now, so I'm not going to be able to do that outside. So the maiden voyage is going to have to just be in the office space, which kind of seems like a stupid decision given that I just repaired it, but I'd like to test it out at least for the video, so uh, let's give it a shot and see if we can just get it in the air without any horrible incidences happening. So, I mean, overall, I was pretty happy with the results that I got. I think the bigger challenge is just going to be doing some trials in worse conditions. The conditions today are just really, uh, really bad. It's just too cold and windy and it's snowing outside. So not a great time to go and fly a drone. So hopefully what I'm going to do is just fly it a few more times this next week and just in increasingly more um, difficult conditions. And then I'm just going to put a little bit more strain on it just to make sure that, you know, if I'm flying it at great heights with sport mode or something like that it's not going to snap so for the time being i think i'm going to call this a win and uh, hopefully you learn something from the video and what not to do and you know maybe the thing you learn most from this video is just to go get your drone repaired by a professional person but basically with the spark it's just a little bit too expensive to go and get repaired right now for me so what i'm going to do is just try and fly it for the next couple of years and then maybe in, in one or two years, I'll pick up a new, a new drone and, and, and start flying that. So if I can keep it going until then, that's my main goal. So thank you for watching. I hope you actually learned something from this. If you do want to repair your own drone, I don't know if that's a good idea still, but hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks from this, um, just about how I, I repaired it with the glue. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope it was entertaining.